Globalization in Asia has a secret history. The great sweatshops and banks and luxury hotels in Indonesia were built on the mass murder of as many as one million people, an episode the West would prefer to forget. But many people here have not forgotten. In recent years, people all over the country have begun searching for the remains of loved ones murdered when General Sahato seized power in the mid-1960s, aided by the United States and Britain. Until recently, the truth of this episode has remained so secret that this is the only known photograph of the atrocities. One day in early October 1965, a gang of thugs entered this school in Jakarta and beat to death the headmaster. He was suspected of being a communist. His murder was typical of the slaughter of more than a million people, teachers, students, civil servants, peasant farmers. Described by the CIA as one of the worst mass murders of the 20th century, the origins of this terrible episode have been covered in mystery. Certainly it brought to power General Sahato. But what is now emerging is the extent to which he was secretly backed by the United States and Britain and by Western business leaders. Within a year of the bloodbath, Indonesia's economy was effectively redesigned in America, giving the West access to vast mineral wealth, markets and cheap labor, what President Nixon called the greatest prize in Asia. To Western business, the great value of General Sahato was that he succeeded in getting rid of the founder of modern Indonesia, Ahmed Sukarno, a nationalist who believed in economic independence for his people. He kept the great Western corporations out of Indonesia and threw out their agents, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. It was only when one of his generals, Sahato, seized power that the door was open to Asia's greatest prize. When the Suharto uh, regime came in after, after the pooch, they were able to make a lot of the fact that they were calling the IMF and the World Bank back in. Uh, they were going to rescue them, you see, and, and British propaganda in particular made a lot of this. You know, the IMF was, was decent, and it was going to bring order and, and everything was going to be lovely in the Indonesian garden. And, and as I say, um, a British diplomat uh, still alive has, has said to me that was very much a part of the deal. Britain and the United States secretly conspired to back General Sahato. The American ambassador assured him that the US government is generally sympathetic with and admiring of what the army is doing. Thousands were rounded up. What was not known at the time was later revealed by American officials. The CIA had supplied a list of 5,000 opponents to be assassinated and embassy officials ticked off their names as they were murdered. The British ambassador recommended a little shooting as an essential preliminary to effective change. In the first few days, the, uh, the British sources in particular purported not really to know what was going on. Of course they knew what was happening. I mean, there were bodies being washed up on the lawn of the British consulate in Surabaya. There were bodies floating all over the Malacca Strait and so forth. A man called Hadi Broto, a uh, uh, lieutenant colonel or something, wanted, was uh, anxious to take some troops, Indonesian troops, from the uh, east coast of Sumatra, from the northeast coast of Sumatra, to um, east and central Java, so that they could take part in what we now know was this terrible holocaust, really. Um, 
he found a Panamanian ship and the ship sailed with the troops down the Malacca Strait, escorted by two British warships. So the British were directly involved in as what you describe as, as a holocaust. Well, well I, yeah, I would count that some sort of involvement, wouldn't you? The American press reported these events not as a crime against humanity, but in terms of their economic advantage to the West. Time magazine called them vengeance with a smile. And the West's best news for years. Others described a gleam of light in Asia. The seeds of globalization were planted in the bloodbath. In 1967, the Time Life Corporation sponsored a conference in Switzerland that planned the corporate takeover of Indonesia. It was attended by the most powerful businessmen in the world, such as David Rockefeller. The giants of Western capitalism were represented. The oil companies, the banks, General Motors, British Leyland, ICI, British American Tobacco, Lemon Brothers, American Express, Siemens. Across the table were Indonesian leaders approved by General Suharto. For Western business, it was the start of the gold rush which later became known as globalization. No one mentioned the killing of a million people. I've never ever heard of a situation like this for any country where global capital essentially holds a meeting with state and hammers out the conditions of their own entry into the country. The conference went on for three days. The first day was when the Indonesians spoke and, and essentially made their case. They divided into five different sections on the second day. Sectoral meetings, mining in one room, food services, light industry in another, banking and finance in another, Chase Manhattan was there, and simultaneously they hammered out policies that were going to be acceptable to these global investors on a sector by sector basis. Um, with each of the people going around the table saying, this is what we need to see, this, this, this. And they basically designed the legal infrastructure for investment in Indonesia. Was the foreign business community here aware that they were dealing not just with a corrupt, nepotistic dictatorship, but also with a mass murderer? That's a, that's a very general question. Um, well, no, it's um, quite specific, actually. I mean, mass murder is mass murder. Um, the, 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 that the fact that many people have died in Indonesia in, 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 in uh, unfortunate, tragic circumstances um, at the... Uh, directly or indirectly as a result of the previous regime um, is hugely unfortunate. Um, whether if foreign investment had not been here that would have prevented in any way um, those events um, occurring. Nobody, nobody has perfect vision on, on what might have been.